I've recently made a video about all the very interesting new features added by the latest firmware update of the Mavic Air 2. The most interesting one is the capability of performing digital zoom at different resolutions. I immediately decided to make a dedicated in-depth analysis of this function, because it can add a huge amount of value to this drone, if it is implemented in an effective way. In this video I will analyze how the quality of the digital zoom compares to the one made in post-processing at the different resolutions, how it can be used combined with different intelligent flight modes, and how to perform a smooth progressive zoom. I have made plenty of videos about all specific aspects of the Mavic Air 2, you will find a link at the end of this video. So, if you're interested in this drone, or in drones in general, I would recommend subscribing to my channel. The digital zoom of the Mavic Air 2 is certainly an extremely useful feature for users who do not rely on heavy post-processing, or need to post quickly their footage in social media, especially if they deliver in full HD resolution. 1080p. I'm generally a bit skeptical about digital zooms, because when I need to zoom into some footage I prefer to do it in post-production, as I get plenty of extra flexibility. I can decide when and how much to zoom, I can zoom in and then back out to the previous size, and most importantly I don't have to plan it in advance, but I can decide to do it into an existing clip while sitting in front of my mighty computer. Of course, when performing a zoom in post-production, the computer is cropping the image, and therefore losing resolution. But if I shoot in 4K and deliver in 1080p, there is plenty of room for cropping. In most cases I need to deliver in 4K, and therefore zooming in post is not really an option. I would need a real optical zoom like the one in the Mavic 2 zoom, or maybe this digital zoom of the Air 2 can somehow perform its task without losing too much quality at the same resolution. We will see that later in this video. Digital zoom functions have been implemented in the past in several cameras using different methods. In some cases they just crop the image, in others they extrapolate pixels. In most cases there is a loss of quality, more or less equivalent to cropping in post-production. The Bayer Quad sensor of the Mavic Air 2 has a resolution of 12 megapixels, but it has the ability to split each pixel in four very small ones, which allows some sort of 48 megapixel mode. Probably the digital zoom mode of the Mavic Air 2 uses this ability to split the pixels in order to achieve a better image quality compared to simply cropping. This is what we want to find out. Digital zoom can be applied to all resolution, but I will concentrate mostly on footage taken in 4K, as this is the way most people will use this function. The footage will be taken in normal color mode in H.264, just as it comes from the memory disk. No post-processing, no noise reduction. This whole video is rendered in 4K, so that any loss of quality due to zooming will be evident. In 4K we can now choose the usual mode, which is now called 4K wide or a new mode called 4K Zoom, which gives the possibility to zoom in. The first thing we notice is that the image from the 4K Zoom mode without any zoom applied has already some zoom factor compared to the 4K wide. I had to apply the 125% zoom factor to the 4K wide to get the same footage size. But let's see how the two versions compare. It is up to you to decide the one you prefer, please let me know your opinion in the comments below. In my opinion the 4K zoom footage has more detail, and looks as if it was taken from a portion of the sensor maintaining the 4K resolution. 
While in the 4K wide version, there is of course a loss of resolution due to the 25% cropping in post-processing. This is already excellent news, even for people who need to deliver projects in 4K, as there is the possibility of choosing between two different sizes of footage while maintaining 4K resolution. A bit like in the Mavic 2 Pro, where we can choose between full field of view or HQ. In other words, assuming we want to be sure to shoot in real 4K, we can either choose 4K wide for a wide field of view of 84 degrees, or else we can choose 4K zoom without using the zoom, as it is already punched in by 25%. Let's see now how the 4K zoom footage looks at 2x zoom factor. In order to get the same footage size in the 4K wide mode, I had to zoom in post-production by 262%, much more than double the size. But this is understandable, as 4K zoom is already punched in compared to 4K wide. Let's see how the two versions compare. It is a close call, but in my opinion the zoom version has more detail compared to the version with zoom added in post. There is maybe also a tiny bit of extra noise, but that can be taken care of with neat video, the software I use to reduce noise. It looks like the R2 is optimizing the ability of the quad bayer sensor to split the pixels, so that the digitally zoomed version is not fully cropped. But is the quality good enough for rendering the footage at 4K without loss of quality? This is up to the user to decide. But there is also the option of zooming into an intermediate zoom factor, as we will see later in this video. Let's say we choose a zoom factor of 150%. We should have a final quality very close to real 4K and still enjoy the benefit of a very interesting magnifying factor. While zooming in from 4K footage is limited to a maximum frame rate of 30 frames per second, in 2.7K mode we can use frequencies of up to 60 frames per second and there is a zoom factor of 2x available. In 1080 Full HD there is the possibility to zoom up to a whopping 4x factor, but frankly I would not go past the x2 mode, as there is a very evident loss of quality. There are two simple ways to perform a progressive zoom. The first one is to touch with a finger the round X1 zoom indicator on screen and then gently drag down or up to decrease or increase the zoom level. The second method gives a finer control of the speed of the zoom. Tap and hold the control button at the left of the remote control and turn the wheel for tilting the gimbal still on the left of the remote controller. If you want a slow zoom, turn it only by a very small amount. While zooming in, all the different intelligent flight modes are available, and this is extremely useful. Let's see a couple of examples on how we can take advantage of the use of the zoom with some intelligent flight modes. In this example I would like to shoot a video of this monastery with several villages and the sea in the background, but I'm too far away to get an interesting view. By using the 2x zoom in 4K wide mode, I can use spotlight or circle modes to have an interesting parallax effect with the church in the foreground. Uh, due to the different zoom level, we also get a different perspective, with the background elements appearing closer to each other compared to when using a wider field of view. In this case I'm using the mode active track to follow a car on a mountain road. 
In many circumstances, when following action or sports scenes, there are obstacles like high trees, buildings or electric wires. Extra care must be taken with the Mavic Air 2, since it doesn't have lateral obstacle sensors. Under these circumstances, it is extremely useful to zoom in, so that we can still get a close view of the object being tracked, while the drone is flying at higher altitude, thus avoiding all obstacles. In this case I pushed the aircraft to the maximum allowed height, 110 meters here in Italy. At this distance, without zoom, the target would be too small and probably active tracked might lose it. But with the 2x zoom, the Air 2 was still perfectly following the car, with a very good view of the target. As you can see, the way the optical zoom is implemented in this new upgrade of the Mavic Air 2 is very interesting and gives plenty of different options. There is also the possibility to perform uh, the famous vertigo effect, also known as dolly zoom. I was going to analyze it here, but there are so many interesting variations in the way this effect can be used with the Mavic Air 2 that I've decided to make a dedicated video to this function, which I will publish very soon. If you're interested in the Air 2 or in drones in general, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.